As I showed in my last video, the maximum possible value of a number is determined by the number of bits available to the data type. Each byte has 8 bits. A 2-byte data type can store numbers from 0 to 65535. A 1-byte data type can store numbers from 0 to 255. Bigger data types that use more bytes can store bigger numbers. For simplicity here, I'm going to stick with 1-byte data types. What I want to show in this lesson is how signed numbers, that's those that can have both positive and negative values, are different from unsigned numbers, which can only be positive, and why sometimes big positive numbers become negative numbers. With 8 bits available, an unsigned data type can represent numbers from 0 to 255, as I showed in another video which is linked down below. Signed data types are either positive or negative depending on the value of the leftmost bit. If a signed data type has a negative value, this bit is set to 1. If it's positive, it's 0. Now, let's look a bit more closely at that leftmost bit and find out exactly the effect it has with both signed and with unsigned numbers. Let's assume this is a 1-byte data type. 1-byte is 8 bits, and the leftmost bit is set to 1, with all the other bits set to 0. As I explained in my last video, the value of a bit that is set to 1 in this leftmost column is 128. That is, it adds the value 128 to the decimal number represented by the whole byte. The unsigned data type, in this case, in binary, is 1 followed by 7 zeros. So in decimal, that's 128. But what happens when that leftmost bit is set in a signed data type? Well, in the last lesson we saw that it switches the value represented by the byte to a negative number. So if this is a signed number, its value would be minus 128. Now, that seems reasonable because, according to Microsoft's documentation, a signed data type can have a maximum value of 127 and a minimum of minus 128. In my spreadsheet, I've written a couple of simple formulas to help to show what's going on here. When a bit is set, the value shown in the column header is added to this row. Recall that in a byte, the decimal value of each column is twice that of the column to its right. So when this bit is set, 1 is added to the decimal total. When this bit is set, 2 is added, and so on. If you don't understand this, go back and watch my previous video, which explains binary numbers in more detail. To work out the unsigned decimal value represented by a binary value, that is, the 8 zeros and 1s shown here, I just add all the values calculated for each column, that is, for each bit in the byte. That's what this SUM formula does. But if this binary value represents a signed number, then the maximum positive value will be 127. If the sum of the columns is greater than 127, the decimal value switches to the lowest possible value for this data type, which is minus 128, and then it adds the sum of the other cells to that value. That's what this formula does. What this says is, if the sum of all 8 cells here, that is, of all 8 bits in a byte, is greater than 127, then add the sum of these seven cells to minus 128. But why is the maximum 127? Well, remember, with a signed value, I need some way of representing both a positive and a negative number. As we've seen, when this leftmost bit is set to 1, that switches the value of the entire byte to negative. In fact, it does a bit more than that. It not only sets the sign, plus or minus, it also changes the value. As we've seen, for an unsigned data type, the leftmost bit adds 128 to the entire decimal number represented by the byte. 
When all bits are 1, the maximum possible value is 255, which in my spreadsheet is the sum of all the column headers. But with a signed number, the leftmost bit is used to switch between positive and negative, which means it's not available to add the positive value 128 as it is for an unsigned number. So to get the maximum positive value for a signed number, I must ignore that leftmost bit. I do that by setting it to zero. And now I can see that the maximum positive number for a signed one byte number is 127. So what happens if I set the leftmost bit to one with all the others set to zero? I can't go beyond the maximum positive value for a signed data type so this now switches to the lowest possible value, that is minus 128. So clearly, since all these seven bits are zero and contribute nothing to the value of the resulting number, this leftmost bit must have done more than just switch the sign from plus to minus. It's contributed the value minus 128. So you can think of this leftmost bit as adding its value to an unsigned number and subtracting its value from a signed number. The other seven bits always add positive values. For example, when the first bit and the last bit are set for an unsigned value, one is added to 128, giving the decimal value for the byte of 129. But when the first bit and the last bit are set for a signed value, 1 is added to minus 128, giving the decimal value minus 127. Now I set this bit, and 3 is added to the value of the leftmost bit. 128 plus 3 for an unsigned number gives 131. Minus 128 plus 3 for a signed number gives minus 125. We can see that in the code too. Here C is a char which is a signed data type and we can see from the Microsoft documentation a standard char can have values within the range negative 128 to positive 127. I sign 127 and my code here shows the binary equivalent. All these seven bits are set to one and this leftmost bit is set to zero. Now I try to set C to 128 and I run the program again. This time it shows that only the leftmost bit is now set to one. Remember for an unsigned number that bit represents 128 but for a signed number, it becomes the lowest possible value, which here is the negative number minus 128. Right, so now let me try 129. Run my program again. And the binary number is now 1 followed by six zeros, then another 1. The resulting decimal value is minus 127 which is exactly what my spreadsheet shows for this binary number. For a signed number like this char, the bit pattern, which for an unsigned number gives positive 129, well, for a signed number, it gives minus 127. Why is that? Because for a signed number, the leftmost bit gives the value minus 128. This rightmost bit then adds 1 to that. Minus 128 plus 1 results in minus 127. What we are seeing here is the behaviour that I first showed a couple of lessons ago when we saw how big numbers can wrap around into negative values. And that's what's happened here. A char has a maximum positive value of 127. So when I assign a bigger number, the bits in the byte are set just as they would be for an unsigned data type, but now the value added by the leftmost bit is negative rather than positive. And that's why big numbers that go beyond the upper range of possible values end up starting all over again at the lowest value of their range. 
For signed data types, the lowest possible value is a negative number. For unsigned data types, the lowest possible value is zero. Now, this may take a bit of thinking about. So if you don't get it right away, go back and watch my other videos about bits, bytes and binary numbers. The links, as always, are down below. Then take some time to experiment with my code, which is shown here. But wait a minute. How does this code actually work? If you've been staring at it and can't figure out exactly what's going on, well, that's not really too surprising, because even though this program is really short, there's, well, there's quite a lot going on in it. I'll explain how this code works in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified whenever I upload new videos.